In this video, we're going to talk about how to convert condensed structures into skeletal structures. So let's start with this example. We have hexane, which is a six carbon alkane. How can we convert this into a skeletal structure? So this structure is equivalent to what I'm about to draw here. I'm going to expand it. Notice that we have four CH2s or four methylene groups. So we have a total of six carbon atoms in a straight chain. In order to convert this into a skeletal structure, we need to draw lines. This one line represents two carbon. This is a carbon and this is a carbon. So this would be the CH3 carbon and this would be the CH2 carbon. This will be the third carbon, the fourth one, the fifth and the sixth carbon. So that's hexane as a skeletal structure. Now let's work on another example. Let's say we have CH3 times two, and then we have a CH and then two CH2s and a CH3. How would you convert this condensed structure into a skeletal structure. Now, if you want to pause the video, feel free to do so. Now, what I recommend doing for this example is to expand a structure first and then convert it into a skeletal structure. So let's start with the CH carbon. So this carbon is attached to two methyl groups. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. Now that carbon is attached to two methylene groups and then the CH3. Now we do have a hydrogen here. So that's the expanded form of this condensed structure. Now let's convert it into a line structure. The reason why we want to do this first is so that we can identify the longest chain, which is here. One, two, three, four, five. So this is two, three, four, five. On carbon two, we have a methyl group. And so we'll put that there. And this is our answer, two methyl pentane. So that's how we can convert this condensed structure into a skeletal structure. Try this example, CH3, times three, and then a carbon, and then a CH, and then CH2. Convert that into a skeletal structure. So first I'm gonna expand it. Let's start with the carbon atom. So that carbon is attached to three methyl groups. Here's the first one, here's the second one, and here is the third one. Now that carbon is attached to a CH and a CH2. So here is the CH carbon, and here is the CH2 carbon. And notice that this carbon has three bonds, and the same is true for that carbon, even though we've already included all of the hydrogen atoms. Carbon likes to form four bonds, and there's no indication of a positive or negative charge here. That's the only time carbon has three bonds, is when it has a plus or minus charge. But when it's neutral, typically it wants four bonds. The only way to have four bonds is to put a double bond here. Now both carbons will have four bonds. So now let's convert this into a line structure. So let's identify the longest chain, which is four carbons. So two, three, four. We have a double bond between, a, between carbons one and two. And on carbon three, we have two methyl groups. We've already incorporated that one. So we can show the two method groups like this. So this is the answer. 3,3-dimethyl-1-butene. Now this is for those of you who want access to the extended version of many of my organic chemistry videos that you see on YouTube. So you can access my Patreon membership at patreon.com 
slash math science tutor. Or you can check the links in the description section below. So let's click on this organic chemistry posts and these videos will come up. So this is what you'll get if you decide to join. So this is the full length video on resonance structures. The free video on YouTube might be like 20 minutes long. This is the full version on acids and bases. It's an hour and 20 minutes long. Functional groups, IUPAC nomenclature, Newman projections with the worksheet as well, chair confirmations. I'm working on this right now, so this is coming up soon. Stereochemistry. So the worksheet for that is completed. Here's the full video. Specific rotation. SN1, SN2, E1 reactions. This is the full video. And then there's a practice test coming up with 77 practice problems. The video for that is completed, but I haven't finished, I haven't started the worksheet yet, so that's coming up soon. And then we have alkene reactions, alkyne reactions, alcohol radical reactions, and the organic chemistry one final exam review. The video is completed, but I haven't gotten to the worksheet yet. So feel free to take a look at this when you get a chance, and let's get back to the video. Now let's try a longer one. CH3, 2, CH, CH, BR, CH2, CH3. So feel free to try that. So I'm going to start with the CH carbon. So we have a carbon attached to two methyl groups. You know what? We could draw it this way. I'm going to put the second methyl group here. And then this hydrogen, I'm going to put it on top. Now that carbon is attached to a CH. So that's a carbon with a hydrogen. Now that carbon has a bromine atom. In organic chemistry, in most cases, bromine tends to form one bond when it's the substituent. It could form more bonds when it's the central atom in a molecule. But for the most part, when it's a substituent, it typically forms one bond. And then we have a CH2, CH3. So let's count it this way. Carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have a 5-carbon chain. On carbon 2, we have a methyl group. And on carbon 3, we have a bromine atom. So this is going to be 3-bromo-2-methyl-pentane. Try this one. Actually, let's change it. Go ahead and work on that example. So let's expand the structure first. Let's start with this carbon. So that carbon has an ethyl group. I'll put the first ethyl group to the left. And it has another ethyl group, which I'll put below it. That carbon has a hydrogen atom. And then to the right, it has a CH2. Now the CH2 has a CH, which I'm going to expand. So we have a carbon. I'll put the hydrogen on the bottom. Now this carbon also has a methyl group. The methyl group is never in the middle. It's always at the end of a structure. The CH2s tend to be in the middle. When you have a CH, they often tend to branch. Now here we have a C and then a C and then an H. What can we do here? So clearly we need more bonds. Notice that carbon has two bonds. So in order to get four, we need to put a triple bond, not a double bond. And that is the right structure. So now let's count the longest chain. The longest chain has seven carbon atoms. Two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. Now, when dealing with alkynes, we need to draw a straight structure because alkynes tend to be straight. So I'm going to start with this first. So this is carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, and then we're going to bend it. So this is going to be carbon 4, carbon 5, carbon 6, carbon 7. The skeletal structure is typically drawn that way when dealing with alkynes. Now on carbon 3, we do have a methyl group, so we can put that here. In fact, we don't need to show the methyl group. We could just leave it as a line. And carbon 5 has an ethyl group, so we can show it like this. So this is going to be the answer right here. We got a methyl group on 3 and an ethyl on 5. So now you know how to convert a condensed structure into a skeletal structure. Now feel free to check the links in the description section below for those of you who want more organic chemistry videos.